The Kansas Tallgrass Prairie, a unique ecosystem in the heart of the plains. A harsh environment with a wide range of temperatures, the Tallgrass Prairie ecosystem has some of the most variable weather and climate patterns in America. However, the Tallgrass Prairie and many of its creatures are in trouble. Dr. Alice Boyle is an assistant professor of biology at Kansas State University. She is studying the effect of climate variability and weather patterns on grassland birds of Kansas with the help of a research grant from the National Science Foundation. Grassland birds are in very steep decline. They're one of the most um, rapidly declining groups of birds in North America. We want to understand why they're declining and what we can do to stop those declines. We're losing a lot of grassland habitat. Um, we just keep on losing native grasslands, mainly to agriculture. The whole middle third part of the country was prairie at one time. Um, it was made up of short grass prairie, mixed grass prairie, and tall grass prairie. Of that tall grass prairie ecosystem, less than 4% remains today. But this is not the only problem our grassland avian friends are facing. Kansas is known for one thing above all else. <laughs> Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. With the deadly combination of destructive weather and loss of habitat, birds of the Kansas grasslands are in danger of extinction. Dr. Boyle and her colleagues have been collecting data from the Kansa Prairie Ecological Research Station to learn more about the habits of our feathered friends. If it gets too much hotter, we're going to be running up against some absolute physiological limits that birds can tolerate. But maybe even more important than that, we're going to see changes in rainfall regimes, precipitation, and probably longer, more severe droughts. And when we get rain, probably more severe storms. By capturing birds and marking them with their own individual color combinations, researchers learn more information about these animals by studying their habits and understanding more about their adaptive capabilities. What we're looking at is just kind of the breeding behaviors and spatial and temporal decisions that the birds make on where to live. And so I'm one of our field technicians, and so I go out, I help catch the birds, do surveys, find nests, monitor the nests. So this is how we catch birds. It's called a mist net. So what we do is we'll set it up in the middle of a male's territory that he has defended out, and we'll put it right in the middle. We have a playback of the bird's song the call that they make and we'll set it right down in the middle at the bottom and we'll play it and they'll think another male is trying to come in and steal their territory so they'll fly right at the net and it has those little dips in the net and so they'll get caught in those and fall down in a We were interested in examining what how birds cope with those periods of, of drought and heat and also how they respond to a big storm and whether they can anticipate a storm and do something to prepare for that. They used a quantitative magnetic resonance machine, almost like an MRI, to measure the bird's body composition by measuring body water and how much of a bird's mass is fat or lean, such as muscles and organs. They compared their data with weather data from each day during the last two summers. They found that when a storm is coming, the birds can sense this change and increase their lean mass, which helps them generate their own warmth. After the storm passes, body water increases, possibly indicating that birds had been dehydrated previously. Bad weather can be bad news for young fledglings too. On a different project, Dr. Boyle and her colleagues showed that some juvenile grasshopper sparrows developed pallid bands in their growing feathers that were lacking pigment. The pallid bands were linked to a severe storm on May 31, 2013. The storm produced golf ball-sized hail and a 2.5-mile-wide tornado. Dr. Boyle and her team concluded that this storm created stress for the young birds that were only just beginning to grow tail feathers, and the tail feather bands were a result of inadequate food.
After finding the relationship between pallid bands and weather events, Dr. Boyle decided to determine the effect of severe storms on the nest success of the grasshopper sparrow by placing temperature eye buttons inside active nests. One gauge is placed outside the nest to measure ambient air temperature, and the other is placed inside the nest. Dr. Boyle and her students track the female's activity using this temperature information. When she leaves the nest, the temperature drops, and when she comes back, it increases to the ideal temperature for embryos and chicks to develop. This is a nest temperature graph from July 12, 2016. The National Weather Service's data for that day states almost five inches of rain fell with up to 60 mile an hour winds. At 3.26 a.m., the rain starts and the air temp drops 3.5 degrees Celsius and the female bird left her nest around the same time. Three and a half hours later, at 6.58 a.m., she returns to try to re-warm her nest. But at 4.03 p.m., she fails to warm her nest and abandons it completely. The nest and air temperatures equalize. The nests of most of this grassland bird species are on the ground, and those nests fill up with water sometimes. The nestlings are not really able to generate their own heat adequately, and um, they can also die from, from getting wet and cold. Time is running out for these grassland birds and many other creatures who make the plains their home. With the certainty of global climate change and drastically changing weather patterns, as humans, we can relate to these animals. The urgency is real for all living creatures on Earth. It's not without the realm of possibilities that we do as animals ourselves, we do have an effect. Ultimately, all these climatic problems are everybody's problem and, and created in a sense by our, everyone's collective action. So um, you can drive less, you can eat less meat, you can invest in solar panels for your house and use more renewable energy and um, less fossil fuels because we need to all do that and to um, reverse the climate trends that we see today. Once humans realize that we are the problem and help is solely up to us, then we can create a better Earth for all living things. <laughs>